Kayla Harrison versus Holly Holm is official for UFC 300. This is massive news, especially for the women's bantamweight division that looks absolutely dead right now after Raquel Pennington became the champion this past Saturday. This was needed for the women's bantamweight division in the UFC. I have felt like since Amanda Nunes has retired, we might be in no woman's land with that weight class. Juliana Pena seems like the next challenger for the belt. She's set to probably fight against Raquel Pennington. But now we have this big monkey wrench thrown into that kind of crappy plan with Kayla Harrison signed to fight against Holly Holm in what could easily be a number one contender fight. I mean, for either one of them winning, both have bigger names than Juliana Pena. This is a massive fight. And honestly, as far as women's MMA goes, Kayla Harrison has that thing where I feel like she's already a star in women's MMA and it's not even having fought in the UFC. It's after a dominant PFL run. In this video, I'm going to break down the matchup, give my reaction to it, and uh, you know, drop a prediction. And then I'll also discuss how I feel this factors in to this current title picture at 135 pounds so make sure you guys smash the like button and if you're new to the channel subscribe first things first let's actually look at this matchup holly Holm coming off of now a no contest but a submission loss to myra bueno silva and then kayla harrison recent win over aspen lad in the pfl I feel like Holly Holm is past her prime. She is nine years older than Kayla Harrison. Holly Holm beat the judo legend in Ronda Rousey, who was a dominant MMA champion, giving her a first pro loss. Now she fights Kayla Harrison, who is a better judoka than Ronda Rousey. She's a two-time gold medalist. She's young and in her prime at 33. She's looked like an absolute stud. I mean, she has one fumble, and it's a loss to Larissa Pacheco, a girl she had already beaten twice, and Larissa Pacheco is top tier as far as women's MMA goes. I mean, she just recently won the PFL tournament. She beat Kayla Harrison last year in the PFL tournament. Who knows how good Pacheco is? But let's throw Pacheco out of the question. Let's throw PFL out of our minds because we're talking UFC, the top tier of MMA. Kayla signs, and this is massive. For the division, this is huge. For this fight here, Holly Holm coming off of a loss against Myra Bueno Silva by submission, that has aged horribly. I don't care what type of drugs Bueno Silva was taking. They weren't steroids. She was taking some type of ADHD medicine. Now, granted, if you're popping amphetamines and then getting into the cage, that's got to give you a slight edge. You're probably not feeling as much pain. You're focused beyond belief. You got that tunnel vision. Bueno Silva off of those amphetamines, fighting Raquel Pennington, she looked horrible. She doesn't even look top 10. She looked like shit. She got dominated by Raquel. Now, granted, yeah, almost had some submission attempts, true. I'm kind of over-exaggerating a little bit for emphasis on the fact that Holly Holm lost to Bueno Silva, and now they are giving her a primed Kayla Harrison. I don't think this is good for Holly Holm. Now, I don't think she's going to get completely ran through and around. It's not like I see Harrison pounding her out in 45 seconds getting to mount. But I do think Kayla lands takedowns. I do think Kayla gets on top. And I do think Kayla's pretty dominant on her way to winning in this fight in her UFC debut. Holly Holm is literally 42 and a half. Like, she's going to be near 43 by the time they throw down, right? It's, it's, it's up there. It's up there. Now... Kayla Harrison has never fought at women's bantamweight, which is scary. Her last fight was at women's lightweight, or actually it was technically at a catchweight of 150 against Aspen Ladd. She's fought in PFL and as the champion there as a women's lightweight. That's 155 pounds. She's going from 155 to 135. Now, previously, she's fought at 145 women's featherweight division. But, like, Kayla Harrison is, like, beyond jacked. Like, she is jacked if she's a dude. As a chick, she's jacked, jacked, jacked. And how the hell is she going to get to 135? She's going to have to lose muscle, which is a little bit concerning. But I think if anybody can do it, it's Kayla Harrison. With the money that's going to be backing her too in this, you know, pretty premier signing to the UFC, I'm expecting her to make weight. A miss weight is a complete fumble. But at 135, this is going to be madness. And, and also a note about Kayla Harrison, you know she was doing judo at 172. 
She's a big girl. Getting to 135, like, I think she's going to be dehydrated, beyond dehydrated. So this prediction could end up being off point just due to the fact that Kayla Harrison could have a horrendous botched weight cut. Now, granted, even if she makes weight, it could be horrendous. And then she gets in the cage and is completely flat, loses to Holly Holm, and just completely kills her stock and uh, potential super fights that she has on the horizon in the UFC. Because who teased a comeback this past Saturday? Amanda Nunes, she can't stay away. Now, her and uh, Kayla Harrison, being Amanda Nunes and Kayla, trained together in the past, American top team fighters. They both rep it for the most part. Now, obviously, Amanda Nunes more so training at home. I don't think that matchup, though, by any means is out of the question. Kayla Harrison wants to prove she is the best female fighter on earth, and now she gets Holly Holm in a debut. Like, this is crazy that it's happening. Like, it's confusing at first when I heard it. I'm like, Kayla's not sticking with... PFL, she's not doing the cyborg fight. This is bigger. This is better. I'm going to predict Kayla Harrison to beat Holly Holm, but I am very, very worried about this damn weight cut to 135. Like, she's going to have to cut a limb off to get down to 35. She's big. Kayla's jacked, and she's fighting at 55 with abs. Now she's at women's 135. So, yeah, I'm a little confused how she's going to make the weight, but I don't think she'd accept the fight if there was no chance that she would make the weight. Remember that video years ago of Chris Cyborg crying as she's cutting to 135 because the UFC forced her to do it? Expect Kayla Harrison to probably be dropping some tears in the hot tub with a very hard weight cut on the way. Still, nonetheless, I think Kayla Harrison will be on weight. I think Kayla Harrison beats Holly. Like I said, Holly Holm? Lost recently, overturned to Bueno Silva. Win recently for Holly Holm against Yana Santos. Santos is not good, not impressive. Loss before then, controversial but competitive split against Ketlin Vieira. And then we know with Kayla, like I said, Aspen Ladd, the Pacheco lost, but she's beaten her twice. And then you see a lot of no-name opponents that she just dominated. I expect Kayla Harrison to beat Holly. She's going to beat Holly, trust me. As long as, you know, she's not... Uh, a quarter of herself with this harsh weight cut, I think that she'll be ready to go and beat Holly Holm. She'll put herself in the women's bantamweight title picture, maybe as the front runner to challenge for the belt following UFC 300 because of Juliana Pena, Raquel Pennington fight, nobody's like jumping up and down with excitement, like sell me that fight, that's what I want to see. But if you told me Kayla Harrison's fighting Pennington, I'd be picking Kayla Harrison all day long, 100%. Kayla Harrison is a... Massive name in women's MMA. But it's Amanda Nunes who teased the comeback. So, like, I'm wondering how they finagle this. Is Kayla Harrison going to then go out, beat Holly Holm, and then potentially fight against Amanda Nunes following that in a super fight for a non-title, but that's the best of the best at 135? Or is Kayla Harrison going to go out, fight Holly Holm, potentially against then Raquel Pennington, Juliana Pena winner, or just Raquel Pennington straight thereafter, and Juliana Pena is pushed out of the title picture? Is Amanda Nunes going to come back and do a rematch with Raquel Pennington? It's a lot of confusion because Nunes chose to retire, but now is showing interest in a comeback, and the damn division needs it. Like, I literally on Monday, which is yesterday, well, I guess two days ago now because it's Wednesday. It's 12.42 a.m. at the time I'm recording. I'm talking to my guy Mike Finch on my Moneyline podcast, and me and him both are in agreement. Bantamweight is dead. There's no names there. Who's the star to build? Who's the fighter on the come up? Not a day later, exactly a day later, I should say, Kayla Harrison ends up getting her cause. I'm burning my eye with a uh, little sweat, but it's because I'm excited. Kayla Harrison gets the call. She's in the UFC. She's fighting Holly Holm. This is exactly with women's bantamweight needed. This saves the weight class for the most part if Kayla Harrison wins. Now, if Holly Holm somehow pulls this upset off and she does win, she'll be granted a title shot next. And she's beaten Raquel Pennington twice in boring fights. I don't think anybody's begging for a trilogy. So, fingers crossed. Love to Holly, the OG. But Kayla Harrison has to win for the division to succeed. Then Kayla Harrison is placed into a title fight against Raquel Pennington this summer. She beats her this summer. And then Amanda Nunes comes out of retirement and fights Kayla Harrison. That's kind of dream scenario for me and the UFC right now. But there's a big question mark is how will Kayla perform at 35? She's a 55er. She's a 45er. She's doing judo at 172. She's cutting down to 135. It's miraculous that she believes she can do it. I definitely think the UFC is going to be strongly involved with helping her to get on point with this weight cut. Because if they aren't, 
there's a chance she completely fumbles it. But she won't because she's a professional. She's a two-time Olympic gold medalist in judo. I have very high expectations for this weight cut. I think she comes in on point. I think she's impressive and beats Holly Holm, but with a less muscular frame that maybe gives her more speed and mobility. This could be a benefit to her. Sometimes the more muscle you have is not necessarily better for fist fighting. And then the dream scenario is we get Kayla in a title fight, maybe against Raquel, maybe against Juliana Pena. I don't know what the UFC wants to do with that uh, because realistically, you cannot put Juliana Pena and Raquel in a title picture. I mean, it's in a title fight, but in like a main event, right? Could you put Kayla Harrison versus Raquel or Juliana Pena? Probably not either, but you definitely can do Amanda Nunes, Kayla Harrison for the world title in a pay-per-view main event. So I think the plan right here, I'm setting it into action. This is exactly what the UFC's plan is. To save women's bantamweight, Kayla Harrison is to beat Holly Holm. She is then to challenge for the bantamweight title. Does not matter who the hell the champion is. She's to challenge for it, win it. Amanda Nunes will then come out of retirement and we will do the super fight. Now the UFC could potentially go a different direction and throw Amanda Nunes, Kayla Harrison together, not for a title. But at that point, why are we even cutting to 135? Let's just do it at 145 then, save the weight cut. Like, I think a strap needs to be on the line because the division needs it. Like, you can't have the two best fighters in the weight class being Kayla Harrison and Amanda Nunes, let's say, not fighting for the belt in a super fight main event. Because then it'll just absolutely diminish the value of that women's bantamweight belt. And it just becomes like the alphabet soup joke title. Like boxing, we got 50 titles per weight class. That would just be like a side title. We, we do like a, a true women's goat belt for Kayla Harrison and Amanda Nunes, which I don't think the UFC is starting like super champions now. Is that the next step? The UFC super bantamweight champion? The UFC, you know... Uh, extreme bantamweight champion. I don't know what idea. The, the legacy bantamweight champion. I think it'd be stupid. So I feel like the goal scenario is a three-fight plan for Kayla Harrison. She will then fight against Amanda Nunes in November. Madison Square Garden. I think that's a game plan. I think there's a lot of potential for that to happen. I think we let Kayla Harrison have a little bit of a run. She beats Holly Holm. She becomes the champion. And then Amanda Nunes comes out of retirement. And we get that fight within the next 10 eight, maybe 15 months, depending on timelines. I mean, if there's an injury, we could definitely hold this back. But the damn division needs it, and I absolutely love this fight. Now, a lot of fans will be like, bro, who cares about women's MMA? There's a strong majority of fight fans, specifically males, that don't give a shit. I personally do, especially when it's Kayla Harrison involved, who I have always felt is an extremely good fighter that needed to come to the UFC to show her true level. I love that this fight is added to UFC 300, which is a card that is shaping up. It got a lot of flack early on. People didn't think it would live up to expectation. It's looking good right now. I think we're going to have a pretty banger event. We'll run through it real quick. We got Gaethje Holloway, Pohashka Rakic, Oliveira Sarukian, Wei Li versus Yan Xiaonan. We got Cater versus Sterling, Nickel versus Brundage, Figueredo, Garbrandt, Green, Miller, and now home versus Kayla Harrison, and we're probably getting Leon Edwards versus Bilal Muhammad too, and maybe even Adesanya versus Dreykus Duplessis. We'll see what happens with that. So I think the card's going to hit, and I think this is a sweet addition. Just announced by Dana White. I had to drop a reaction for it. I'm excited to see what happens. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, this early prediction and reaction. Make sure you guys smash that like button. Let me know what you think. Do you see my plan for Kayla Harrison? Or am I completely off? Maybe they're just doing Kayla Harrison in a one-off versus Nunes after. Maybe the title doesn't even matter anymore. I think that it does. And I think many of you in the comments will agree this is saving the women's bantamweight division. It was necessary. Make sure you guys subscribe if you're new and turn on those post notifications to daily content on the channel from news reactions to live streams. You don't want to miss anything. So keep it locked in right here at MMA Experts. Much love, my people. And I will see you all in the next one. Peace.